from the wilderness of Kodiak Island, Alaska. This is Murder and Mystery in the Last Frontier with your host, Robin Bearfield. In a land full of peril and vicious animals, humans are the most dangerous predators of all. You might not associate the Birdman of Alcatraz with Alaska, but Robert Stroud, often called the Birdman, once lived in Alaska, and after murdering a man in a Juno bar, he spent the rest of his life, 54 years, in prison. He was in solitary confinement for 42 of those years. Stroud is one of Alaska's most famous criminals, and if you are like me, you will find his story fascinating. Welcome to Murder and Mystery in the Last Frontier. I'm your host, Robin Bearfield, and I'm broadcasting from the heart of the Kodiak National Wildlife Refuge on Kodiak Island in Alaska. Stories change, and with the distance of time, historical characters often appear more benevolent and likable than they were in real life. I would love to tell you a tale about a man who received too harsh a sentence for manslaughter and was then mistreated in prison. And while this version of the story has been told by some biographers, other historians do not paint Robert Stroud in such a favorable light. I'll try to relay both sides of his story, and you can decide if Robert Stroud should have been released from prison at some point in his life, or if Robert Stroud was a dangerous psychopath who belonged behind bars. Some of you may even feel Stroud should have been hanged when prison officials ordered gallows built outside his prison cell in Leavenworth. What has not been debated over the years, though, is that Robert Stroud had a near-genius IQ, and his research and writings advanced the field of ornithology. Robert Stroud was born in 1890 in Seattle. His father was violent and abusive, and he removed Robert from school when he was only in the third grade. At age 13, Robert ran away to become a hobo, riding freight trains around the country. He returned to Seattle when he was 16 and worked installing electrical fixtures. He dreamed of Alaska and freedom from his abusive father. And in 1908, at age 18, he signed on with a section gang headed to Katala, Alaska, to build a railroad. In a saloon in Cordova, Alaska, Robert met Kitty O'Brien, a prostitute who was twice his age. Depending on whose version of Robert Stroud's story you believe, Stroud fell in love with Kitty when she nursed him back to health after a bout with pneumonia, or Stroud became Kitty's pimp. Of course, the two versions aren't mutually exclusive. He could have been in love with her and her pimp. But whatever their feelings were for each other, the two became a pair, and in the winter of 1909, they moved to Juneau, Alaska. In Juneau, Robert ran into Charlie Dahmer, an old friend. Dahmer invited Robert and Kitty to his cabin for drinks and a meal. And during the evening, when Robert left to run a quick errand, Charlie attacked Kitty and stole her locket. When Robert returned to the cabin, Dahmer was gone, and Kitty had two black eyes and a red ring around her neck, where Dahmer had ripped off her gold chain and locket. Again, according to which version of the story you believe, Stroud grew furious when he saw Kitty, either because Dahmer had attacked the woman Stroud loved, or because Dahmer had neglected to pay Stroud's prostitute for sex. No matter which version you favor, Stroud's response to Dahmer's actions represents a pattern of behavior which Stroud repeatedly displayed during his life. Whenever Robert Stroud felt someone had wronged him in any way, he reacted violently. 
In this case, Stroud either hunted down Dahmer and shot and killed him, or Stroud confronted Dahmer verbally, Dahmer reacted aggressively, and Stroud shot and killed him in self-defense. Stroud immediately went to police headquarters and confessed to murdering Dahmer, telling the police he and Dahmer had argued over money. Since Alaska was not yet a state, Stroud was tried in a federal court. His mother hired a leading Juno attorney to defend her son, but the attorney was appointed to a federal judgeship shortly before the trial began. Stroud's replacement attorney urged Stroud to plead guilty to manslaughter, convincing Stroud he would only have to serve two to three years in prison if he pled guilty. Unfortunately for Stroud, though, his sentence was determined by federal judge E.E. E. Cushman, a judge who had recently arrived in Alaska and was determined to bring law and order to the territory. Cushman gave Stroud the maximum sentence of 12 years for his crime and sent Stroud to the federal penitentiary at McNeil Island in Washington State. Stroud left Alaska in 1909 when he was 19 years old, never to return. Stroud was a sullen, angry prisoner and was considered extremely dangerous. He remained in contact with Kitty for a while. She sent him weekly letters and even visited him once. But not long after her visit, her letters stopped. Years later, Stroud learned his family had asked the warden to block Kitty's letters because they believed it was her fault he murdered Dahmer and was sent to prison. Stroud was assigned to work in the prison kitchen at McNeil Island. When another inmate accused him of stealing food, Stroud was denied parole. In retaliation, Stroud stabbed the inmate in the shoulder with a paring knife. Stroud also assaulted a hospital orderly, who reported Stroud for threatening him unless the orderly gave Stroud morphine. Due to this violent behavior, six months were added to his sentence. In 1916, Stroud was transferred to a maximum security prison in Leavenworth, Kansas. He only had a third grade education, but Stroud had a brilliant mind. He enrolled in a 10-month correspondence course in higher mathematics and finished the course in only four months. Next, he took courses in astronomy and structural engineering and got an A in each class. He read every scientific book he could find and continued to take advanced mathematics and religion courses. As Stroud's mind expanded with his new knowledge, his hatred for the guards who kept him prisoner also grew. Six months after arriving at Leavenworth, Stroud's 18-year-old brother from Juneau, Alaska, traveled to Kansas to visit him. The night before the planned visit, a guard named Andrew Turner caught Stroud whispering to a fellow prisoner after lights out when the prisoners were supposed to remain silent. Instead of letting the minor infraction pass, Turner reported Stroud to his superiors, and Stroud's visitation privileges were revoked. Stroud was furious and confronted the guard in the cafeteria the next day. When the guard raised a club to hit him, Stroud sunk a six-inch shiv in the guard's chest, killing him instantly. On May 2, 1916, Stroud was convicted of the first-degree murder of Andrew Turner and was sentenced to hang. In an appeal, the conviction was nullified. In May 1917, he was retried and again was found guilty of first-degree murder, but this time he received a life sentence. Solicitor General John W. Davis confessed the prosecution made errors in the second trial because he hoped if the court awarded Stroud another trial, the new jury might give Stroud the death penalty. In May 1918, Stroud was tried for the third time, and this time he was again sentenced to death by hanging. Let 
Let me take a short break. Are you searching for a new podcast to listen to? Well, don't quit listening to mine, but I want to introduce you to a funny guy and his fascinating podcast. My fellow citizens, our Earth is in the middle of a crisis, plunging deeper into chaos. No, I feel your pain and your loss. We can't stand idly by and let this happen. We must rise up and... <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Damn it. Well, this is awkward. Hi, my name is Josh Shell, and I am the host of the Let's Start a Cult podcast, where each episode, myself and some guests take a look at different cults from around the world, for educational purposes only, and definitely not to start our own cult. Join me every other week as we break down dangerous religious cults, political extremist groups, and every other kind of cult in between. Should I apologize for the terrible southern accent? No? Okay. Subscribe and listen to Let's Start a Cult anywhere you listen to podcasts. Stroud waited in solitary confinement and watched from the small window of his cell while workers built the gallows where he was scheduled to meet his fate. Stroud's mother appealed to President Woodrow Wilson and his wife, and eight days before the planned execution, the president commuted Stroud's sentence to life in prison in solitary confinement. The sentence pleased Stroud, who liked to be alone, where he was free to study and read. One day in June 1920, Stroud found a nest of sparrows that had been blown out of a tree and into the exercise yard of the prison. He nursed the birds back to health and raised them to adulthood. Prisoners were sometimes allowed to buy canaries as pets, and Stroud began collecting birds, raising them, and then selling the canaries to help support his mother, who had moved to Kansas to be near him. A new warden at Leavenworth made it his mission to turn Leavenworth into a progressive rehabilitation penitentiary. The warden was intrigued by Stroud and his canaries and provided Stroud with cages, chemicals, and equipment to study the birds. He also gave Stroud stationery to help him further his ornithological studies. During his stay at Leavenworth, Stroud raised nearly 300 canaries and wrote two scientific books on bird diseases. The first book, The Diseases of Canaries, was published in 1933, and a later edition with updated information, Stroud's Digest on the Diseases of Birds, was published in 1943. Stroud found a cure for the hemorrhagic septicemia family of diseases in birds and gained respect in the field of ornithology. Stroud's canary business overwhelmed the prison staff. Each piece of mail sent to or from the prison had to be read by a prison official, and Stroud sent and received so many letters the prison had to hire a full-time secretary just to read his mail. Also, he allowed his canaries to fly around his cell, so his cell was filthy. When officials tried to force Stroud to cease his canary business, Della Mae Jones, a bird researcher from Indiana, protested and managed to obtain 50,000 signatures on a petition to allow Stroud to continue to operate his business. She sent the petition to President Herbert Hoover, and Stroud was not only allowed to keep his birds, but he was given an extra cell in which to house them. In 1931, Della Mae Jones moved to Leavenworth, Kansas, and started a business with Stroud to sell his bird medicine. Prison officials were anxious to get rid of Stroud and the problems he created with his business and his birds, but Stroud learned Kansas law prohibited married prisoners from being transferred out of the state. So he married Della May by proxy. This move infuriated not only prison officials, but also Stroud's mother, who moved away from Leavenworth and refused to talk to her son for the rest of her life. Stroud continued his business for a few years, but when prison officials discovered Stroud making alcohol with some of the lab equipment they'd provided for him, they finally had the ammunition they needed to shut down Stroud's business and move him to another prison. 
On December 19, 1942, Stroud was transferred to Alcatraz Federal Penitentiary, a maximum security prison on an island off the coast of San Francisco, California. Prison officials did not tell Stroud they were transferring him until a few minutes before it was time for him to leave. Since Alcatraz did not allow prisoners to have pets, Stroud's birds and equipment were sent to his brother. Alcatraz Prison in California, built on a small rocky island in the Bay of San Francisco, operated from the time of the U.S. Civil War in the 1860s until it was closed in 1963. The island's remote location made it the perfect site for a prison, but this location also made it expensive to maintain, and the cost of maintenance finally led to its closure. During the years it operated, Alcatraz housed many infamous prisoners, including Al Capone and Machine Gun Kelly. But the one prisoner whose nickname is synonymous with the prison is the Birdman of Alcatraz. At Alcatraz, Stroud spent six years in solitary confinement and another 11 years segregated in the hospital ward. A psychiatrist at Alcatraz diagnosed Stroud as a psychopath with an IQ of 134, confirming his superior intelligence. Stroud was considered an extremely dangerous prisoner and was described by inmates and guards as an aggressive homosexual with a bad temper. Today, he probably would be categorized as a sexual predator. As he aged, Stroud's temper mellowed and jailers considered him less of a threat. He loved birds, and because of his contributions to the field of ornithology, he had a following of thousands of bird breeders and poultry raisers who campaigned for his release from prison. Since Stroud had been convicted of killing a federal officer, though, his sentence for life in solitary confinement was never lifted. In 1959, due to his failing health, Stroud was transferred to the Medical Center for Federal Prisoners in Springfield, Missouri. He died on November 21, 1963, at the age of 73. He had been incarcerated for 54 years and had spent 42 of those years in solitary confinement. His thirst for knowledge never dimmed, even as his health failed, and not long before he died, he was attempting to learn French. In 1955, Thomas E. Gaddis, an advocate for prisoner rehabilitation, wrote a book about Stroud's life titled Birdman of Alcatraz. The book was a fictionalized portrayal of Stroud's life and made Stroud appear much less violent than he was. It is largely due to this book that the facts about Stroud's life have become so murky. Gaddis's book was adapted into a screenplay, and the film Birdman of Alcatraz was released in 1962. John Frankenheimer directed the movie, and it starred Burt Lancaster as Stroud, Carl Malden as a fictionalized warden, and Thelma Ritter as Stroud's mother. Like the book, the film portrayed Stroud in a favorable light, but former inmates who knew Stroud said he was much more sinister and unpleasant than the character Burt Lancaster played in the movie. Stroud was not allowed to watch the movie, but while preparing for his role as Stroud, Burt Lancaster visited him in prison. According to Lancaster, Stroud told him he believed he was repeatedly denied parole because he was homosexual. He told Lancaster, let's face it, I'm 73 years old. Does that answer your question about whether I would be a dangerous homosexual? Art Carney played the part of Robert Stroud in the 1980 TV movie Alcatraz, The Whole Shocking Story. And Dennis Farina portrayed Stroud in the 1987 TV movie Six Against the Rock. Stroud has also been the subject of songs and video games.
Was Robert Stroud a misunderstood man who was only trying to defend himself when he committed his crimes? Or was he a violent, dangerous psychopath who needed to be locked away in solitary confinement? Was he rehabilitated in prison, and should he have been paroled in his later years? No matter how you feel about his imprisonment, Robert Stroud was a brilliant man. Considering how much he managed to further the field of ornithology with only limited resources and supplies, what could he have done with his life had he not shot Charlie Dahmer in a bar in Juneau, Alaska in 1909? Thank you for listening, and I hope you enjoyed this episode. Thank you to my patrons for your support. Check out the show notes for more information on how you can support this podcast and unlock extra episodes by joining the Last Frontier Club. You can also search for this podcast on Patreon to learn more about the Last Frontier Club. I'll see you soon for the next episode of Murder and Mystery in the last frontier. Yeah.